السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد Peace and blessing of Allah be upon those who follow the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is Islam and follow the sunnah and the path of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and peace and blessing of Allah be upon all those people who sincerely understands Islam and accepts Islam in their hearts alhamdulillah and my brothers and sisters today inshallah I'm going to talk about uh, the subject which our brother Ridwan uh, who is a posted prophet, he was talking about that he had a debate or discussion with, with four Muslims and he was alone and he has learned so many things and he has come to this conclusion that Islam is false. He has come to this implication and he has said that at the bottom that Islam is false because of those five main reasons. Let's see. First thing he says, uh, free will and predestination paradox. Free will, he's saying that Allah, therefore Islam is true. Now we are going to talk about uh, this paradox. I can say that because first of all, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, according to the claim of our brother uh, Ridwan, he says that he was a Muslim and he says some of the, so many of time, many a time, he said he was a practicing Muslim. And then because of this paradox understanding of Islam, he left Islam. And then he makes his claim all the time and he speaks against Islam. And also he says that uh, stay away from Islam. So let's understand this. And I, as I said that my brothers and sisters, I've got nothing against him in person. And it is between him and Allah how Allah is going to judge him. Because most of the time he has said, the reason I have left Islam because I am not I am not convinced with the understanding of concept of Allah, concept of Rasul, concept of Quran, and concept of uh, hell and heaven, concept of uh, free will and concept of predestination. So because of that, I am I am not convinced. So I left Islam. So now, based on that, nobody should actually judge him according to him that he will go to hell. It's nobody can judge. Ridwan, nobody can judge you as a man of a hell or heaven. It is between you and Allah how Allah is going to judge you because Allah knows what is there in your heart and Allah knows your ability and capacity and your power of understanding. And if you are sincere that you, because you didn't understand and that's the reason you left Islam or you left Allah, so Allah will judge you accordingly. So I'm not here to tell you that uh, certainly you're going to go to Jannah because you will become Muslim, so you go to Jannah. Or I cannot say certainly because you are now X or you were never Muslim, which I say that, then I cannot say that certainly you will go to Jahannam. It's even we people as Muslims, I can say for myself that I will not go to Jannah based on my actions. Alhamdulillah, I tr I'm trying my best to follow the deen to the best of my ability and using the free will that Allah has given to me. Because if I want to do bad things, Allah will not stop me. If I want to do good things, Allah will not stop me. But Allah did tell me, Abdul Majid, this is good and this is the result. Abdul Majid, this is bad and this is the result. So Allah has given me the choice. And I know there are certain times, for example, I feel tired and I want to pray, but I don't get up for Fajr sometimes. And I don't get up and I pray when I get up. So this is something I know that I should not be doing it. And Allah has given me the choice. Allah could have forced me to get up. Allah could have forced me or Allah could have punished me immediately. The time when I wanted to pray, uh, I, was, I should be praying at the Fajr time. But I didn't pray because I, I feel tired and I wanted to take rest. So I used my free choice. And I chose something which is not what Allah wanted me to do. So this is very practical example. Same thing as a human being. My team has said to me so many times that sometimes uh, Sheikh Abdul Majid, Dr. Abdul Majid, you are very negative at Ridwan. And that's not God want me to be negative. God has given me correct understanding. My team says that we should have said this to Ridwan. We should have said this to Dr. 
David Wood. But uh, Dr. Majid, you said this, this, which is negative, which is sin, which is wrong. And this is I did for based on the choice that I had. God, Allah has not forced me to curse you. Allah has not forced me to say bad about you, Ridwan, or to uh, Allah has not forced me to say bad about David Wood. Allah has told me that I should be good to you. Allah has told me that I should uh, call you, uh, you know, in a nice way. I should encourage you to accept, you know, the good things of Islam. And I should clear your doubts if I have to. But I can't say negative. But I do sometimes is because, not because Allah has forced me to do that or not because Allah has written in that. Allah has told me not to do it. But I'm doing it. This is, this is the clear example of my free speech. This is a clear example of your free speech. Allah, according to my understanding, Allah can cut your tongue. Allah can chop your head. Allah can make a mockery of you while you're making live videos against Allah. But no, Allah has let you do what you want to do. Your judgment will be later on. And that you will be judged on the day of judgment when you will have no other excuses. So that's between you and Allah. So practically understanding, there's no paradox in your argument. You know, the free will is given and what you are doing is free will. What I'm doing is free will. You are doing bad things, which you are not told to do good, bad things, but you are doing it. You go, you speak against Allah, which is, which is any religion, a man with common sense. If you don't believe in Allah, say, then keep your mouth shut. But you talk against Allah. You talk against Islam. You talk against uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi You talk against Quran. Why? You should not be. If it is not your concern and you say stay away from Islam, that's okay, fine. It's not your concern. But you do. What is that? That's the free will. That's the free will because Allah does, doesn't want you to do it. But Allah gave you the free will. So Allah is allowing you to do whatever you want to do, good or bad. It's your choice. Same thing with us. Now let's see. Let's see your point. First of all, free will and predestination paradox. You see, Number one, Islam teaches that Allah is almighty, all-knowing, and the one who creates and decrees everything. Point two, Islam claims that Allah gave humans free will and responsibility to choose between belief and disbelief, or disbelief, and to be rewarded or punished. Three, for Islam to be true, Allah must have created and decreed everything and humans must be free to choose between belief and disbelief. If either one of the two is false, then Islam must be false. Okay, that's your third point. Your fourth point is, if Allah created and decreed everything, then humans cannot have free will and cannot be held accountable. If humans have free will and can choose between belief and disbelief, then Allah cannot have decreed everything. It is impossible for both claims to be true at the same time. Then you come to the conclusion, therefore, Islam is false. Okay, now let's see if this is my answer the way I have understood. And this is with my free choice and free will. Again, to all those viewers and those who are watching this video, including David Wood and uh, Ridwan, your choice. Let's see the answer. Both point one and point two are true. Allah created and decreed everything. Humans have been given free will to choose between belief and Disbelief. Divine decree is not a coded program. It's more like a transcript. I'll explain these two points. First of all, let's see that Allah decreed, Allah created us. If you believe that Allah created us, you don't even believe who created you. Okay, but alhamdulillah, that's not my point. Second thing, you also say that Allah decreed everything. Okay, you, you are mistaken here because you don't understand the word decreed. Allah has decreed as a script. Allah has described everything like a, a transcript. 
Allah has not decreed that you are not allowed to do this, you are not allowed to do that, or you have to do this and you do, don't have to do, you have to do this. No, that means you are, you are being controlled. Even in your speech, your control in your actions, your control in your lifestyle. No, nothing like that. That is not decreed. The transcript, if you read the translation of the transcript here, uh, it's there. Uh, this is a very clear translation and the description is there. Uh, this is not decreed what you are saying. Allah has described everything. Allah, uh, Allah has decreed everything, but it is in the form of a transcript. It's not a coded program, fixed, that this and this. No. Allah has decreed, uh, and that is a transcript way. That you have to understand. Then this is my advice to all the people to understand uh, our argument and his argument. Transcript is not what the coded program is. Coded programs cannot be edited. It's fixed on a man, woman, robot, or Ridwan, Abdul Majid, David Wood, everybody. But transcription is not that. Transcript is, in education, a transcript is a certified record of a student throughout a course of study having full enrollment history, including all courses attempted, grades earned, and degrees, degrees and awards conferred. Now, what does that mean? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created Ridwan, He knows in and out of Ridwan. He knows the past of Ridwan, the present of Ridwan, and the uh, future of Ridwan. Same thing. So Allah, based on His uh, all knowledge, and He knows the nature of this uh, Ridwan, Allah has transcribed that way. So that is also one more important point. What has been transcribed is not known to anybody. Whatever has been transcribed is not known to anybody. Not to Ridwan, not to the prophets, not to the messengers, not to the angels, not to the jinn, not to anybody, any creation of Allah. It is not to Allah alone. But this transcription also, this decree also shows us that Allah has guided us Allah has guided us right from the age of puberty because children are innocent. So the people who are born innocent, we talk about the first birth. The first birth of every creation is innocent because they have no, you know, a power of intellect, uh, you know, understanding. So they are innocent in that sense. But when they reach the age of puberty and they are able to you understand and use their five senses, then God has taught us that way. That is called transcription. So again, I repeat this, that first point and second point of our brother Radwan, a apostate prophet, is true. Allah has created us. Allah has decreed everything. And also humans have been given free choice to choose between. That's based on the information given to them, not based on the, you know, coded program type. No, even the information says, you know, uh, believing is good for you. But the person is, you know, already coded, programmed that he will go to hell. So by force, going against his understanding, he will choose the bad. No, that's not what Rizwan you are thinking of decreed. This is where the divine decree is not a coded program. It's more like a transcript. Point three, it does not override free will nor inhibit free will. Yes. That means it is there. The free will is there. You, as I gave you the example of myself and yourself, whatever we do, it merely states what was the outcome of any individual's, individual's actions. Yes, whatever your outcome of what you have done and what you have produced and I don't know what more you're going to produce in the future, that is, you know, uh, will be, it will be judged accordingly. Same thing, whatever my actions are there, my Actions will bring the outcome of that. Time is a creation of Allah. Hence, there is no past, no present, no future for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not limited to past. Allah is not limited to present. Allah is not limited to uh, future. Allah is not dependent of any knowledge about the past or uh, present or future. Allah is, there is no time, uh, you know, tenses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words, in grammar. 
Therefore, both can be true with no contradiction, no paradox in that. First objection of yours. Allah has decreed everything, but he also gave you the option to choose between two paths. That's your, says you are talking about Islam, that this is what you understood from Islam. Then you are refuting it because the way you have understood that point. What you have understood, you say, if Allah created and decreed everything but left us a choice, then our final choice is outside of Allah's decree. No, it's not. That's your understanding. Allah did not decree everything. So you say now Islam is false. Now my response to you. Answer to your first objection. Again, divine decree is not a mandated, coded program condemning humans to hell or heaven. No, it's not that. This decree, this decree is, does not mean that you are fixed and you will go to hell or you go to heaven. No, that's your understanding. It is just a transcription for from the beginning of your action till the end of your action. Whatever you have done and whatever the result will come, that is, is, that is called transcription, which I gave you, uh, the transcript which I gave you the uh, definition. A student goes to the college, studies, attempts, exams, and does all that thing. What is the action after all that period of his time? Whatever the result is, that's called decree. So that's not fixed because the university doctor or professor will not make a code. Even if you are studying well and you are best, and then you, he gives you fail. He makes you fail. That's wrong. That's your coded program. But that's not coded program, which is called decree here. It is transcript. And that result will is also Allah knows the result. But Allah is giving you that information that this result is based on your action. Let's go to the next point of mine. Not some uh, defense of mandated divine decree. Is just a transcript, hence no divine decree is overridden. Any final choice is just part of the transcript, which means all you have done, what is the result is, that's your decree. Not some defense uh, uh, defines uh, of mandated de divine decree. Your second objection. Your second objection. Your second objection is, that Allah has decreed truth. Humans choose, uh, humans choose falsehood and evil. You are saying Allah has decreed the truth. And then humans are choosing false and evil. Okay, so you don't like it. And you are refuting that. This means Allah did not create and decree everything. Again, what does that mean? In one part you are saying that Allah created and decreed the truth. Now what you are saying? It did not create. It did not decree any, everything. Okay, then that's the reason Islam is false. It shows that you have a problem, man. <laughs> I don't know. Should I say Ridwan's paradox? Or should I say, you know, uh, Islam paradox? Allah Akbar. Answers to the objection too. Again, divine, is, uh, divine decree is not a mandated, coded program condemning humans to tell a hell or heaven. As I said, I'll repeat this many a time so that this is where the correct understanding of uh, the decree. It's not a coded program. Okay, it's a transcript. Remember that. It's just a transcript, hence no divine decree is overridden. Allah did not program humans for heaven, which humans defy. Means if Allah has defined somebody to go to heaven, then he, human, if they have no choice, then they cannot change. They have to go to heaven. But that's not there. No. If somebody, if Ridwan, Allah has destined for you to go to hell, then whatever good you do, you will still go to hell. But that is not what Allah has defined for you. If that was the case, then you would have not gone with all this, you know, the knowledge that Allah has provided for you. So this knowledge will be argument against you on the day of judgment. Remember that. Allah did not program humans for heaven, which humans defy and uh, supersede the decree of Allah and choose hell. No. If you, that is the case, then you try. Try your best to change Islam and you see what you get. 
And you have seen so many Christians who have who have been ex-Muslim, and when they became Christian, what they how they ended. It's not nobody had done any harm to them. Nobody killed them. Nobody stabbed them. The outcome outcome has come by themselves, their own reason, uh, their own uh, result of their actions. This is simply a misunderstanding of divine a divine decree, or I can say, Ridwan paradox, apostate prophets paradox. Even being born innocent and believing in Allah does not entitle you for heaven. That's just Allah's mercy because your life is still defined what you are going to do. And the end result will be the end of your life. That will be. So whatever Allah is doing, Allah is doing is out of mercy. Allah is doing out of mercy. Normally, generally, every child is born innocent because the child will not know what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad, what is evil and what is good. No, the child is born innocent. Only when the child is having ability to, you know, do the things by the choice, that time it is the transcript start from there and then it ends at the end of the exam that child has done, passed all the courses and assignments. Yes, paradox Radwan, your third objection. Third objection is Allah creates us and knew what we would ultimately choose, which is why He decreed our final choices and decided our punishment or reward in advance. How can you say that? Do you know? Did you see that? Uh, you know, the. Uh, tablets of Allah, where Allah has a list of, you know, all the people who will go to hell and all those people who will go to Jannah? No. Which prophet brought this list? Did Jesus bring that list? Did uh, Moses bring that list? Or did any atheist did the search and uh, confirmed, okay, I went to he seven heaven and I saw God has got the list of all the millions and millions of people going to the Jannah paradise, heaven, and all the millions are going to hell. Where did you get this information? It's in your brain. Misunderstanding brain, paradox, uh, uh, one. It's not, you have no evidence to that. You are just saying it. Because Allah has not de decreed that way. List of the people of the Jannah and Jahannam. No. Response. Our resp your response to our point. If Allah fully created, yes, designed yes and decreed everything yes then he created humans yes he created them capabilities personalities intellect environment etc in such a way that he conditioned nah the condition is choice you're mistaken you're mistaken the condition is choice choice have no condition that's why we say, you are, you are having a paradox, man. You are contradicting. The, that he conditioned them to believe. Or no, he has given the choice to believe or disbelieve. Free will. Then you say, oh, uh, free will does not exist according to you because you are putting condition. Yes, of course, if the condition is there, then there is no free will. But Allah has not put any condition. Where did he put the condition? If that is the true, if you bring that condition to me and you bring that evidence, then I can also join you and say Islam is false. So paradox is one. My answer to your third objection. Three. Again, I have to repeat because I have to school you. Sorry. Uh, age wise. Okay. Again, divine decree is not a mandate code program condemning humans to hell or heaven. Where Allah conditions humans for he heaven and hell? This is my question. Give me the degree, a proof. Did see Allah say in this uh, book, which is bound in 6,000 plus verses, did Allah say, okay, X, Y, Z, hell, confirmed, no. Then all those verses where Allah gives you the choices, Allah gives you options, you know, to repent and Allah gives you all those, it's gone then. No, you cannot even prove from the Quran that you hate the most. You have kicked, you have burnt, you have torn the pages, you have even. So that way, 
you have no answer you have no proof for that it is only in your brain where is that i want to ask you where that allah has made that condition a divine decree is just a transcript recording the outcome outcome of any individual's actions based on their actions only that's the you know the result will come after the actions and there's a hadith of Rasulullah Sallam. A person is insane or a person is sleeping. There's no record, no transcript for that. It's only when a person is sane and person is alive and the person is whatever he's doing with the free will, with the choice, in words, in actions, everything. That is the transcription and that is based on the you know, actions done by the individual. Again, because time is a creation of Allah and there is no past, present tense, present or future for Allah because Allah is not dependent to get any information uh, so he has to wait for studying past he has to wait for studying the present he has to no uh, for Allah there is no everything is in front of him Allah in front of Allah again because time because time is a creation of Allah there is no past present or future for Allah humans think this in advance because they operate within time but not Allah. Allah does not need, you know, to, to think about what I have to do in the future. But humans have to work out to do something in the future. Now you are planning. You told me in your latest video that uh, the next video you're going to say that. Who knows? You might die before that. Okay? Because you don't have the choice of your life and that. But definitely your actions, you have the choice for that. So I wait for the next wish, uh, video and I wish for you a healthy and long life with yourself and your family. Okay, I don't want your wife to be upset, your children to be upset, that I wish you death, no. So humans think this is an advance, this is an advance because they operate within time limit, which they're not Allah, Allah has got no time limit, we have to think of the past, present, and we have to plan for the future. Humans are simply born innocent, not entitled for hell or heaven, till they reach the age of puberty. Okay, now your analogy of the robot. <laughs> your analogy of the robot, you are comparing, you know, God's creation of you. Look, you yourself. You're not a robot. Are you a robot? So don't bring this analogy for God. Allah gave you a beautiful face, mashallah. Handsome, smart guy with full hair on your first skull and your forehead. So you are not robot, but your analogy is, you know, about robot and you're thinking Allah created you as robot. No, you're a handsome boy, man, intelligent person. You have a free choice. Robot, if you if you have a control and robot wants to look on the right, cannot look on the right when you want to look, make him look on the left. But you can do right and left and you can see whatever you're doing. Alhamdulillah. Every time you end and you say, hey, stay away from Islam, there's a cup that you have next to you. And if that was the control by robot, Allah would have shut your tongue immediately. Like you see in the horror movies, they, they, their lips are, see, you know, uh, sued. So when they can't, it's a stitched, they can't speak. Allah could have done that to you, but you got the choice. You got the choice of using your fingers this way, and you got the choice to make the, you know, the cartoon of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So Allah gave you that choice. Allah doesn't want it. Allah doesn't like it. Allah doesn't like your, uh, you know, abusive nature of uh, Quran and all that thing and the cartoon that you made. But Allah gave you that choice. Allah is not making you robot. He didn't make you robot. Allah gave you free will. Okay, robot analogy. You say that if I create a robot and I know exactly every single action the robot will take and create it nevertheless, then I will have essentially proved my own plan to create this sentient robot <clears throat> while knowing that this robot would make the wrong choice and that I would therefore punish the robot with eternal torture. That's wrong! It shows not the failure of the robot, it shows the failure of the one who made the robot. Because you already made the robot where you know this robot will make, it will, robot will go against you. So that's the reason. So the, you, it's not the fault of the robot, it's your fault. But Allah didn't make you like that. Allah didn't make you like that. And Allah is not going to put you in the hell because you're doing good things and you disobeyed Allah. 
and you went against uh, so allah you are talking about robot uh, you are saying that robot was robot went against allah uh, the creator of the robot that's why the robot is punished no here allah is not going to punish you because allah has given you the choice of good and bad so allah has not chose you to make mistake no it's your choice answers to robot analogy okay let's uh, if you knew the robot can only make the wrong choice then you have not uh, you have not uh, made a being with free will you have not made him a free will a person who a robot with the free will but just a programmed being yes you have programmed him that in the end he will do mistakes but that's not called free will okay you uh, you know you can that uh, if you know if you knew the robot can only make uh, wrong choice only make wrong choice and that is you made him you made him like that then you have not uh, made you you would have not made a being with free will yes because you know that this robot does not need free will this robot will make mistake so there is only only you know you you made him like that and that means you have not given him the free will but just a programmed being allah created humans with the ability to make both right and wrong decisions both right and wrong choices freely allah has not controlled them otherwise somebody wants to talk like you, you the china has made a robot which has got feelings now they the robot kisses but sometimes maybe you like that another female robot you may be fallen in love with that you won't let the robot touch it but still the robot wants to go for it so you will control that robot but this is not what allah is doing controlling you okay so uh, allah has created humans with the ability to make both right and wrong choices freely and are be arbitrarily uh, arbitrarily this is uh, allah's you know way of creation of the human beings with the choice free choice again divine decree is not a coded program that is fixed into the you know memory and the chip of the robot it's more like a transcript and transcript cannot be in the robot alhamdulillah it does not override free will nor inhibit uh, free will because we computer you can take out the chip format it again reprogrammed it you fix it that's computer that's robot but not the human beings how many times you have been programmed by allah <laughs> how many times your chip has been removed i don't even wish any bad for you maybe the in future you might have to go and scan your brain something will happen it merely states uh, i don't wish bad for you okay i have seen you know when uh, nabil qureshi died people said oh, that's a punishment curse from allah that he had stomach cancer i'm not saying you will have brain cancer i'm sorry i don't wish bad for you <laughs> come on man i don't i really i don't mean mean, mean bad for him come on man don't say that abdul majid is known for sarcasm <laughs> no nothing like that i wallahi radwan i don't wish any bad for you i wish you to you know because when a healthy person like you speaks against islam it makes us a, a more active you know we we start doing something or we have to say something to ridwan so thank you for that it merely states what was the outcome of any individual's actions yes time is a creation of allah hence there is no past present or future for allah okay let's see your other uh, conclusion your implications one allah decrees everything two allah creates choice a and b Three, Allah gives the human the option to choose between A and B. Four, the human chooses B. Five, uh, since Allah decrees everything, Allah must have also decreed that the human would be, you know, be, would choose B. Now, see, you are contradicting four and five is a paradox. You should have said in the fourth one that Allah forced the human to choose B. Then the, 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 the fifth will go together. But see, fourth, you are saying Allah chose uh, the human chooses B. That means who chose the human? It's not forced; their choice. And your fifth sentence is saying, since Allah decrees everything, Allah must have also decreed. No, must have means Allah forced them to choose B, 
then why he gave A and B? And then why you didn't say in the fourth point that Allah forced them to choose B? No, you are contradicting yourself. Okay, scan, brain scan, please. Since Allah decrees everything, Allah must have also decreed that the human would choose B. Where is that? Contradiction. Paradox 4 and 5. We will have that another clip for you. Therefore, Allah chose B, not the human. No, where, where is that? You said human chose. Now see, again 4 is contradicting. 6. Come on, man. Get it checked. Paradox. Or maybe like a de, 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 delixia. What is that? De dyslexia. Yeah, that means, you know, seeing something 4 to 6 and 4 to 5, 6 to 4 or 5 like that. So please, get yourself checked. Therefore, Allah chose B. Allah chose B and hum human chooses B. So who is, who is right here? Now, for 4 is right or, or you're mistaken. Should be four, 6 first or 4? Please, work out next time. Not the human. <laughs> so what was this? Number 4. If not the human here, and Allah chose, then the, the four should be, Allah forced them to choose me. That should be the correct answer for not to have paradox. Number seven, the human does not have free will. Where is that? You are said. You already said that God has given them the choice. And then you said human chooses B. And then the other words, you are again contradicting yourself. So human does not have free will. Then what's the word, why the word choice is there? Contradiction, paradox, correction of English. If uh, de, 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 dyslexia and, uh, you know, brain scanning, please. At least, you know, eyes checking. And it's uh, easy in your country, Germany. Definitive answer. You like it, your choice. You don't like it, your choice. Allah is not forcing you. Abdul Majid is not forcing you. My video will not force you. Don't worry. Yeah, I don't have your control, you know. You are not robot to me. Again, divine decree is not a coded program. It's more like a transcript, etc., etc., etc. Allah did not program human beings to choose B. Yes, contradiction, your own statements. Allah is just recording their actions. Allah created human beings with the ability to choose A or B freely and uh, arbitrarily. Refer to previous slides for more information or before that, book an appointment. With Here we have NHS. I don't know what you have there. Okay, number one. Allah creates. Yeah, you, again, you have so many things to say, Yar. Now say again, I don't know. Where did you get this program? Idea. Wallahi, Radwan. I should say this. You should declare Christianity. Because I met so many, I met, I met so many Christians and for them to justify, for them to justify that uh, dying of Jesus on the cross is a real justification. Why, and that's my pastors I'm talking, my friends, close friends for 10 years I know them. They say that we are sinful people. We are all, they don't say that now the God has done this or God has not given the choice. No, they don't say that. They say that we all are born with sin, referring to the sin of Adam. And they say that we cannot achieve what God wants us to be perfect. And what you, this is what you are saying. And then they are saying that a person will definitely will end up, they are saying, person definitely because of the sin will end up to the hell. So innocent life has to be, you know, sacrificed. So the salvation takes place and that is the reason Jesus gave his life for the salvation of the, his believers. So I think this is where you should, you're coming from that angle with, with different words. Choice are yours. You have chosen the different words. So I don't know. I'm not telling you, but uh, you know, it's up to you. You, you should, you know, declare yourself whatever you believe. Okay, number one, Allah, you, you are saying, this is your point, not mine. Allah creates flawed humans and tests them. Okay, Allah creates flawed humans. So that means every should, everybody should go to hell then. Everybody should do mistakes. Everybody should commit crime. All. So there should not be, even the Christian should be, you know, uh, killed. Uh, well, the Christian should be making mistakes. Even Jesus himself is created by God as flawed. Do you mean to say that? And you're saying that the test 
uh, then Allah is testing them. No, that means Allah created Jesus, Prophet Moses and all the other people and even you yourself. That means all the good that you are doing is also, what is this? If, if Allah created you, flawed, okay, then you must be doing everything negative. Your wife must have left you a long time ago. But no, there's something good in you. Where did you get that good from? How did you get it? Allah creates heaven and hell. Okay. Believers go to heaven. Disbelievers go to hell. This is what the Christians also believe. This is what the Hindu believe. Swarg and Narg. Do you have objection to them? <laughs> For them? No. You, because you're one of them. Sorry. I'm sorry. You see. Sorry, sorry. I, I didn't mean to that. Because I don't know what's there in your heart. Okay, number four, you say, it is inevitable that countless humans will fail and go to hell. Why countless? Why can't you say all the humans will go to hell? Why? Flawed. All fl humans have created flawed. Then they all should go. Why? So, so that means you are also, you know, giving some, some credit to some th good things. And that good thing is from where? Who gave them that good thing? Who made them that good? Who gave them the choice? Ah, paradox. Okay, bonus answer for you, man. See, we are so generous, yaar. You are thinking that we want to kill you. We want to kill people who hate Islam. No. I want, I, when you kicked the Quran, when you tore the pages of the Quran, when you started eating the pages of the Quran, I told my team, I want him to do more and more because on the day of judgment, he should not have any excuse saying, I did it out of understanding because I didn't know. So God give me one more chance. No. Okay. Bonus answer. Nobody will go to hell forever for being flawed. Yeah, because flawed can be good and bad as well. So why good will go to hell? That's why you are so clever. You chose that only most of the people, may, you know, uncountable people will go to hell. That's your very clever understanding, conclusion. That means some people will go to he uh, paradise, he heaven, according to your uh, previous sentence. Nobody will go to hell forever for being flawed and making innumerable mistakes. Yeah, innumerable mistakes that, def that definitely, if a person does... You know, we, we, we have that. We, I don't want to school you. You have to, you know, it makes no difference to you. And my, my team says, hey, I should school you. No, I, it's your choice. You're intelligent, man. You do it. If you like it. Your choice. Point three, two. No matter how many flaws, you ask forgiveness. I'm schooling him, man. Nah, sorry, I'm not schooling you. This is, I, I believe, not for you. Okay, no matter how many flaws, you ask forgiveness, you will be forgiven. That's Muslims. And the Christians are already forgiven. So you accept that. It's easy for you. Two. Three. Only people who after knowingly, yeah, there you may be. Okay, my team is saying something about you. They have positive things, understanding about you. Because I don't know what's there in your heart. And they think you are very sincere. Allah alam. I don't know. But uh, I'm not sarcasm, okay? No, there's no sarcasm in this. But I'm saying that I don't know. I don't know where you end. Okay. Only people of uh, who after knowingly and sincerely realizing the truth, reject it, will go to hell forever. So this is the same thing what Christians say about, you know, those people that knowingly they know that Jesus died for their salvation. And if they reject Jesus, they'll go to hell. Ask them. They also say that. So do you think Jesus is a wrong God or Christianity is false? Good. Let's see. It's your, your choice, man. Allah is not the most forgiving. You are saying that. Let's see your argument. You are saying humans can be forgiven but not most forgiving. Okay. There are many humans can be forgiving uh, but not most forgiving. This is my answer to you. You know, because suppose... You as a Christian, and you are the holiest Christian. You are the holiest Christian. You will follow the teaching of Jesus. Somebody slept on your face. You are a very smart guy, man. You, it will be a big scar on your face. I don't wish that. But if somebody slept your face, and you are a holiest, holiest Christian, you will say, come on, man. 
complete it. Okay, done. Now he gives you a third slip, slap. What are you going to do? Come on, man. <laughs> Four times. Jesus said that. No. So you won't be forgiving him. So you can be a forgiving person, but not most forgiving. Two, there are many things human beings do. Human beings do, uh, do not forgive. And uh, even if they do, they will only do so maybe a handful of times if you are lucky. If you are lucky. Otherwise, maybe, maybe sometimes somebody will come and slap you. <laughs> I don't know. They might forgive you, but sometimes there's somebody will come. Uh, I'm not saying, okay, but there are people like that. So human can forgive. They can be forgiving, but not most forgiving. It's only Allah who is most forgiving. Because see, Allah has given you the chance till your last breath. If you repent sincerely and ask him humbly, forgive me, he will forgive you. That's their choice. Till the last breath. But Allah forgives everything and anything unconditionally because when a person is dying, what conditions is going to put there? And what is Allah is expecting for a person to die? But we all believe, this is the consensus of all the Muslims, Shia, Sunni, Barilvi, anybody. All Muslims believe a person dying uh, on the dying bed, if he sincerely repents to Allah, Allah will forgive him unconditionally. I wait for you. I wait for you. But Allah forgives everything and anything unconditionally, no matter how grave or how much, uh, how numerous your sins are or your disobedience to Allah. Where is that mentioned? It's there. Chapter 51, verse 49. Allah created evil but has also created good. So Allah has given you the choice. Now see, good is only once will take you to the paradise. Evil can be till your last breath. Doesn't matter. One good repentance, once sincerely to Allah, one good will override all your sins. And I read that and I made a video of that. I gave you, and I, sorry, not for you, it was for David, and uh, David Wood. And that is chapter 25. I'll give you the reference if you want. You can go and check it. Chapter 60, 25, Surah Al Furqan, verses 68, 69, and 70. You will find the complete answer, and this is where it count, confirms that Allah SWT, and this is also chapter 51, verse 49, it says that Allah created evil, uh, but also He created good. There's an equal balance. Okay, so good and bad is also creation of Allah, and the choice is yours. You choose good, you choose bad. Okay? Also, when you talk about paradox, there's no paradox. There's, you know, positive and negative. Everything that is mentioned in the Quran, but I think you overlooked reading that. I know you read uh, English and you're very good at that. The Quran says, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ And everything we have created in pairs. We have created in pairs means good, bad. Male, female, and you know, happiness, sadness, reward, punishment, evil, and good. So, this is what it is everything has got balance in that. And you will be the transcript. There's an equal balance in these two things the positive and negative. So, that's Quran. You have no way you will find that. Therefore, my brother Ridwan, Islam is true. And I'll tell the people, don't leave Islam, stay with Islam, and stay with Ridwan, because he'll educate you more about Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.